Technology is evolving and improving at an incredible pace in our modern times. One year ago, I was a caveman who needed to search for programming advice on Google, but now I can just ask a tiny little robot in my browser. But it's not just with AI, it's with data as well. Innovations in brain imaging have given us ways to visualize the brain in incredible detail. Our smartphones and smartwatches have given us the ability to track our activity and sleep on a minute level. In response to this, statisticians have started to devise ways for us to analyze these new complex forms of data. This is Pocketstat, a series of short explainer videos on useful and interesting concepts and statistics. In this video, we'll talk about functional data analysis. Functional data analysis, or FTA, is the term first coined by James Ramsey, who wrote one of the foundational textbooks on this topic. In functional data analysis, we consider an entire function to be a unit of observation. For example, if we were trying to examine the effect of x on y, the fundamental unit here are the numbers. But in FTA, one or more of these numbers might be replaced with an entire function. For reference, let's look at the simple linear regression model. This model tells us how changes in the covariate x are associated with changes in the outcome y. In this case, both x and y are numbers, and we'll call them scalar values. In FCA, one or both of these scalars are replaced with the function. Depending on which one is the function, we can get three different flavors of functional regression. When the covariate is a function and the outcome is scalar, we get what's called scalar on function regression. When this relationship is flipped, we get function on scalar regression. And finally, when they're both functions, we get function on function regression. The idea of having a functional covariate or outcome might feel crazy, so let's have a closer look at each model and see an example from the literature. In linear regression, the coefficient represents the change in the outcome for a unit change in the covariate. In scalar on function regression, we're interested in estimating a coefficient function instead. For a given t, this product indicates a small contribution to the change in the outcome. Then, this integral indicates that we need to sum over all these little contributions over the values of the domain t. So overall, this coefficient function describes which regions of the covariate function contribute to reductions in the outcome and which regions contribute to increasing it. In this paper, the functional covariate was derived from functional magnetic resonance imaging, or fMRI. fMRI was used to measure the blood oxygen level activity in a particular area of the brain, which they've abbreviated as BOLD. A hot and warm stimulus was applied to a subject's arm, and this brain signal was tracked over time, which forms a functional covariate. The outcome in this case is pain intensity. So the researchers were interested in seeing how changes in the brain signal over time could affect this outcome. This coefficient here represents the estimated coefficient function, along with point-wise confidence intervals. It suggests that the time after the stimulus is associated with higher pain intensity, which makes you think. Did we need statistics to figure that out? Function on scalar regression takes this form, and we can see that the form of the model changes to fit the form of the outcome. Both the intercept and the error are now functions themselves. And similar to scalar on function regression, we're interested in estimating and examining this coefficient function. We can think of this intercept function as a kind of a baseline, since it's what's left when the covariate equals zero. When the covariate changes value, this coefficient function here then represents changes to the baseline function. In this study, the functional outcome is physical activity in a given day, and there are actually several predictors used in the study, including season, TV use, having an American mother, etc. These clouds represent the actual functional data collected, while the bold lines represent the averages stratified by different variables. We'll focus on cold seasons here. In the raw data, you can see that cold seasons produce an average activity profile with slightly less activity from noon to 6 p.m. When we look at the associated coefficient function with colder seasons, we can see a drop around that time and that the magnitude of this drop roughly matches what we see in the data. Finally, we get to function on function regression. Like with function on scalar regression, both the intercept and error are functions. The coefficient function is now a kind of coefficient surface. I tried to find an actual use case published in the literature, but I could only find case studies in statistical journals. In this exploratory analysis, 
the authors used functional data analysis on fMRI data. I'm not well versed in this field, so if you know a little bit more about this technology, please let me know in the comments. The functional covariate in this case is a rough measure of water diffusion in the brain along tracks in two parts of the brain, which I'll call area A and B. So there's two functional covariates. The functional outcome is actually the same type of data as the covariate, what was measured in the third area of the brain, which I'll call area C. In this case, the coefficient surface in the regression represents a kind of spatial association between two regions in the brain. And here's the estimated coefficient surfaces found by the researchers. These regions with dark and red colors are regions that were significantly associated with changes to the baseline function. In other words, changes in diffusion activity in one part of the brain are significantly associated with changes in other regions of the brain. Functional data analysis is an exciting branch of statistics, and we're only just starting to see it being used in contexts outside of statistics papers. Data is constantly evolving with new technologies, and as a result, statistics is evolving as well. If you like this video, consider subscribing to the channel if you'd like to see more topics like this. See you in the next one.